Welcome back everyone. Today I'm taking a look at the original Hokuto no Ken on the Famicom, which was produced by Bandai and released in 1986. It more or less follows the plot of the first anime series. It's a post-apocalyptic world a la Mad Max, and main character Kinshiro wanders the wasteland kicking ass and bringing down tyrants with his ultra badass martial arts skills. None of this is conveyed in the game though, there aren't any cutscenes or even an opening text crawl, but it's not really the deepest plot in the world, so who cares. All of the important characters are at least featured, though they too aren't really represented all that well. The stages look okay, they're pretty standard for an 8-bit game from 1986, but the character models look pretty awful, like Atari 2600 level representation. That doesn't stop them from exploding though, which is always appreciated. The sound design is also pretty standard, but the cherry on top is definitely Kinshiro's Bruce Lee-esque noises he makes when he attacks. I love it. This is an exceedingly simple game, just walk to the left and punch or kick enemies as they come at you while also trying to avoid the ultra annoying projectiles that come flying in from off screen. When you kill a red enemy a phrase pops up above their body that you need to jump up and retrieve in order to get a power boost which makes you walk and attack faster. And when you collect seven your shirt rips off just like in the show and you become an unstoppable killing machine. Or an easily stoppable killing machine, whatever. To progress to the end of each level and face the boss character, you have to go through a series of doors, but as for what order to enter them in, or if there even is a correct order, I don't really know. The best I can tell is you're not allowed to face the boss character of a stage unless you're fully powered up. If you happen to die during the boss battle, which you probably will because they're frustratingly difficult, you are sent all the way back to the beginning of the level and you are once again at your weakest and slowest. There are only five stages in this game, but good luck completing them all without first going insane. This is an instance where I'd actually recommend passing on this game and going for the sequel instead, which was released internationally under the series' western name, Fist of the North Star. It features much better graphics, better controls, and much more coherent stage layouts. It's by no means a great game, but it's definitely the better of the two. Either way though, you'll still get plenty of squawking and exploding bodies, and at the end of the day, isn't that what really matters? I think so.